Welcome to the third and last video of this mini-series about unit testing in Python. In this video, you're going to learn how to test for exceptions, how to use expected failure, and also how to skip tests, even conditionally. So, let's have a look at how to test for exceptions. We can use a context manager, okay, which is better in my opinion, but you could also use self.assert raises without context manager. So, to use the context manager, I'm actually going down here, okay, we can do something like with self assert raises like that, type error, okay, type error is basically the error we are expecting, okay, and then here the code to run that will raise the exception, that we expect to raise the exception, okay, so example dot can drink alcohol then string like that. So in this case, we expect to get the type error exception if we pass a string instead of a number as the age, okay? If you need to, you can check the test of the error message as well, okay? So you could do something like same thing as contest manager cm, then we call the example. Then down here, you can do something like exception message cm exception args and then and here we can actually access the exception here we actually we are actually getting the message okay and we could check if the message is the right one the one we expected or something else using the self so it's equal exception message you need to enter number okay so basically we are expecting a type error exception and also we are expecting that this is the text of the exception okay so let's see if this fails as it should as you can see not supported between instances etc you need to enter a number etc exception error so it actually failed as expected so now we have the test in place and we know what we want to get. So let's go to the example.py file and we can actually change our can drink alcohol try int age except value error and we raise our own type error with the enter a number like that with the same text okay so basically here we are trying to convert the age passed in to the function to integer okay if this raises an exception it means that this is not actually a number and it's something else okay and we raise our own type error with this text okay Basically, in this case, if you're maybe asking the user to enter their age, you should validate the input differently. You definitely don't want to, the program to crash because the user entered something wrong, okay? If you want to know more about how to validate inputs properly, you can check out my video about it. Link in the cards up above and in the description box down below, okay? So let's run the test and see what we get now. As you can see now, it actually works, but if we just to, to show you we change the thing here now you get a solution error you need to enter a number and you're you're expecting the uppercase y and you get you're getting the lowercase y okay because we actually changed it like that perfect as you can see everything is working as expected so now let's say that you have a test and you're working on the actual function but you can't get it to work and you want to carry on with other code this function this test would always fail because you haven't finished yet so you can label it as expected failure okay because you basically know that this test is going to fail because you haven't finished yet okay so you can label it as expected failure so if the test fails it's expected to fail and you don't get any error okay you don't get a failure because you're expecting a failure you're getting a failure and that's fine so let's see an example and then we're going to talk about how to skip tests okay so let's actually pretend we're working on a function so let's say that here we're working on this let's duplicate it 
and let's say that we're working on this and we haven't finished yet okay and this test uh, is definitely going to to fail because you haven't finished so you can label the test as an expected failure like this so you can use unit test dot expected failure like that okay so if we run that you get a success and then x expected failure okay expected failures one okay because we are basically telling python i know the code is going to fail okay so don't count it as a failure then let's say that you start working on the function again and you get it to work if you leave the expected failure there when the code actually works the test will fail okay because we're still expecting a failure but the code is actually working and you know that you finally found the solution and you can take the decorator away let's actually fix the function and see so let's say that we fix the function like that finally everything is fixed but you leave this here so if you run that as you can see you unexpected success failed okay because now you're you're still expecting a failure but you're not getting a failure anymore because you've just fixed it so you get failed the test failed unexpected successes one and this is how you actually understand if you fixed it because you're expecting a failure you try to fix it as soon as you get unexpected successes one and you get the u failed that means that this act this code here actually is working and you are getting a success not a failure anymore so you can just remove this because now everything is fixed and if you run that you get two dots okay this is different from simply skipping the test because in that case python doesn't actually run the test and we'll see that in a minute and you don't know like in this case when we actually get the code to work okay with respect to failure python still runs the test and when the code actually succeeds it tells you about it with the unexpected success okay of course instead of using this you can just skip the test and when you start working on that again you can remove the skip the creator okay it's uh, sort of the same thing but i'm just telling you all the possibilities and then you or your team can actually decide how to use them so let's actually talk about skipping tests but before we do that do me a favor and like the video if you're enjoying the content subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment down below for the algorithm and especially because i love to read them so let's say that you have a test and you want to skip it for some reason maybe in this case it's not because the code is broken but just because you want to skip it or let's say that you want to skip it when a condition is true like for example you want to skip it if you're running a certain operating system etc etc there are actually different methods to do that so let's create a variable up here 10 like that okay because we're going to need that later on so let's say that for some reason you don't want to run the test grid person okay you can use the skip decorator like this you can do something like unit test skip here you can even add like a message skipping because blah 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 okay and if you do that you see that you get s skipped okay here you're skipping it all the time but you can also skip the test if a condition is true so the condition can be whatever even a function that returns a value etc etc in this case i'm just writing a stupid condition to show you how it works so you could do something like let's actually comment this out like that and keep that as a reference so unit test dot skip if then here the condition x less than 12 and here the methods like skipping because x less than 12 okay and here you'll see that you get skipped and if you use the v flag to have more information you get test drink alcohol okay okay test read person skipped skipping because x okay so you've got more information if you use the the v flag also for the expected failure etc etc you get more information if you want then there is also a skip unless python will skip the test only if the condition is false let's actually comment this out again and then 
right like unit test dot skip unless and then in this case skip unless x less than 12 skipping like that perfect so in this case now we're telling python to skip the test unless the value of x is less than 12. so if it's greater then python will skip the test so in this case everything is working because x is actually less than but let's say that x were 14 then we will get skipped one as you can see skipped okay perfect let's go back to x like that there is also a method you can call from inside the test function instead of uh, using the decorators so if you remove that you can do something like if x greater than 12 then self dot skip test and then skipping because x greater than 12 in this case we're not skipping it okay but if x is 20 then skipped as you can see skipped skipping because x greater than 12 okay basically you're doing the same thing as above but instead of using the decorators you're calling a method and this could be useful for complex conditions etc and this could also be used in the setup function which i talked about in the previous video so let's say that you need to get or create something to run the tests and you're not able to get it maybe from a server or whatever you could use the self skip test and write a message like skipping because not available or something like that okay you could even have more than one test case so basically more than one class with related tests in it and you can skip one whole class using the same decorators okay let's actually quickly add a new class so let's say that let's actually copy this part just this part like that and we're going to have it down here test example two let's remove all of those okay let's read person two to differentiate them so let's pretend that these are completely different test cases okay so you've got this test case with two tests in it and then you've got this test case with one test in it okay if we run that you can see that you get this this okay and then skipped and skipped both okay let's actually remove the skip here and remove the skip here okay so if we can actually see that working properly without skipping anything so you get that's okay 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 so three tests two tests are in the first test case and one test is in the second test case okay so now let's say that we want to skip the first test case so we want to skip the whole test case here like that okay and we can do that using the same decorators okay so you can skip the whole class every time or if a condition is true etc let's say an example with a condition okay that makes sense let's say that you have a variable operating system like that and this is windows okay and let's say that you can run the first test case only if you're running windows because there are maybe things that can only run on windows and you could also use this maybe if you want to run the test case only if something is available or not like a package or something like that okay so you could do something like unit test skip if operating system is different from windows and then maybe skipped because tests require windows something like that okay in this case everything works because of course we have windows as you can see everything works like that but if we change this to linux for example what do we get let's actually keep that we get skipped because tests require windows as you can see three tests skipped two okay but instead of skipping just skipping this test and skipping this test one by one you can just do this here so you keep skipping the whole test case with all the tests in it and this is running because you're not checking anything okay pretty pretty cool 
And if we run that without the, you can see skipped, skipped, not skipped, okay? Because this is the first test case with the two tests, and this is the second test case with only one test, okay? Okay, so this little series has come to an end. You can find the link to the playlist containing all the videos of this series in the description, so go and check that out. Also, if you've already watched all of them and you want to keep learning, if I were you, I would watch this other really interesting video about Python, so click on it and I'll see you there.